Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. We're going to continue some of our painting lessons that we're doing. I'm showing you some Ala Prima techniques and we're going to do some wild roses. This is a, a 14 inch by 11 inch standard size so it's easy to find a frame for them. Uh, just a wood panel. This is an MDF wood panel that I use. It's uh, You can also use like a hard board. If you use a canvas or something, fill it up a little bit with uh, some of the canvas prep medium so it, goes, uh, so it gets a little bit smoother because we're going to do some wild roses here with some details on them and you don't want to be fighting that weave okay all right so um what i have here though is i gave it a coat of canvas prep medium sanded it with 180 grit and i'm ready to go i have some uh, reference photos that you can see right out here i even put up a photo that i did a painting that i did uh seven years ago now um and uh, it was very very popular people like that that type of composition so i want to show you that i've never showed this that particular way doing it here on youtube so we'll go ahead and do that today now for those of you that are also following along in our dog part that side <laughs> everything is reversed when you're looking at the camera like this so up over my shoulder here this way here you can see uh that is one of two australian shepherd poses that we're going to do i have it all ready to go there have it sketched out we are going to be uh, painting that one so that one's coming up immediately after this in the next day or so and uh, then for the membership i will paint a second pose a second very popular pose of it and a different australian shepherd uh, dog different coloring and eyes and everything and uh, just a lot of fun when you're painting animal portraits like this and one reason why i like to incorporate it those techniques like how i paint some of my roses and everything that those of you that love the roses some of those techniques i learned i learned through portrait techniques not only painting human portraits but animal portraits and uh you know painting other genre really help you to learn different things okay so that was going to do for the palette that i have here this is my standard uh youtube palette i put out two extra colors here that i'm going to use on the background two of my favorite ones i'm going to show you this real casual background that i do it's very very popular and so i want to show you that uh this is sapphire blue and if you don't have sapphire blue it's a mixture of phthalo blue ultramarine blue a little bit of black a little bit of white but sapphire blue and raw umber nice earth color here they make a beautiful gray together but this is my standard palette the Hansa yellow dark light yellow uh, the uh, yellow oxide naphthol red light burnt sienna pine green phthalo blue cornacridone violet red violet white this is the Derivan medium now all the list of all the colors i will put down below in the video description so you can just click on that and you can see all the colors there's also links over to amazon and everything like that where you can get the uh, heritage multimedia colors if you want you know paint along with uh, me with those particular colors that's what i use so this is the Derivan open medium and i wanted to show you this uh, because it is in acrylics, I've been an acrylic chemist all the way back from 1983 when I finished college and everything, building stuff. And new acrylic systems now are totally different than acrylics that were made even 10 or 15 years ago. And uh, the mediums that they come in. Now, Matisse Dervan, I love working with this, color, with this company. As a matter of fact, they manufacture this paint here. Um, and this, this open medium that they have that I've been featuring on several videos is absolutely amazing now i had one of my students she paints with a lot of the open medium and she's an, an acrylic and she said i went to go varnish it two weeks later and it's still wet yes this medium takes forever to dry so you have to each artist is going to be a little different about how you work with it but you have to be careful and i want to show you this i'll move this out of the side here for a second if you go look at my channel i painted a jack russell terrier December, I painted it December 16th, put it up on the 17th of December. This is the palette that I use for that Jack Russell. You can go look at it. This is the palette that I use. And at the end of that painting day, we took off for the Christmas holidays and spend with our grandkids and stuff. And I left this palette out. This palette has been out since that. And now, today, this is Wednesday, January 4th, and it's almost one o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, this is that palette. Now, all my acrylic colors here, you can see, peel right off. They're dry. They're hard. They're dry. There's nothing left on them, right? And you can just, you know, peel them off when they're like this. But this was my pile of open medium right here. It is still wet. 
So it has been a couple of weeks. It's been sitting out on the pallet here wet. So what this is, is when you add this to acrylics, it starts to really slow them down and it starts to feel like an oil. And I was an oil artist for a long time. Now I'm an acrylic artist and I actually don't use as much uh, um, open medium say, than I would have, say, 15 years ago when I was closer to being you know, an, an a oil artist. I like the acrylics. I like the faster drying portions of the acrylics. But this medium, when you add it, so the medium that I have out on my palette, it's one reason why I put it out all the time, that medium, this open medium that you see right here, will stay wet for a long time. And you can just leave it out on your palette like that, and it'll stay wet for a long time. Now, if you want to fast dry it, you can use some heat, okay, on it. Just use a hair dryer on it. And if you, so if you need to get something varnished, use the hair dryer on it and drive that, uh, drive basically this kind of stuff, which is our extender. This is a, a little cap of extender medium. I like to use extender medium and open medium sometimes in the paintings, and I'll vary their uses, but I like to use those in the paintings. The extender medium for thin, thinner areas, the open medium for thicker areas, and you'll see that in all kinds of videos because I paint with hundreds of techniques. Okay, enough of the gabbing. Let's get into that. But there is, you know, a lot of you say you don't like acrylics because they dry too fast. There are mediums now that you can slow these down to hours, okay? Now, I'd like you to move to the acrylic side a little bit so you don't worry about that, but there are a lot of mediums to help you. Newer generation, newer generation acrylics are different. All right, so let's go in and let's try some of this background. I'm going to take... Uh, my big brush and just some water. This is an old, old two inch brush, softer brush. And I'm gonna take some water here. And one of my favorite things to do is take some of this blue and some of this um, burnt, uh, I like the uh, raw umber here, and I'll thin it out. Now I don't like to mix it too much. So you can see you can get a, and if I get too much of it mixed, I'll just add some more here and try not to mix it too much. As I, as I come up here. And now what I'm gonna do is, and this is one of the favorite backgrounds I like to put on. I like to just put it on like this. And sometimes let's just pick up a little bit more blue here. And I like to just swirl this around here like this and leave some of this negative space, some of these other areas out here, leave some of that. Now I'm gonna, um, put in a little bit more contrast in through here so I might make a, a little bit more of a mark. See, I like this kind of stuff. This is the contemporary look. Now, if you don't like, you know, if you want to smooth it out a little bit more, you certainly can. That's your choice. But uh, I like, and a lot of my customers, my collectors like that as well. So I'm going to put in just a bit more contrast where I'm going to want these uh, wild roses to come over here. So basically what I think of is light coming up from one side and then the shadow side. And you can see like with the wild, wild roses and stuff, you can get some really darks in there too. But I love these blues. And the uh, the wild roses, we can paint them either warm or cool. I'll show you, you know, both. But on a background like this, they work so very well. Now, sometimes when I'm painting with this and it's still wet, you know, you can take your brush and you can draw right in here right now and, and uh, start setting up your flower. And that's, that's a pretty good, you know, way to do that. Um, and, you know, so that you can see this. You set in what we call the ghost. Sometimes I'll take my paper towel and back out just a little bit like this to create that larger spot, maybe for a, you know, for a, a turned, uh, wild rose right here maybe we're going to push one right in there so you can use your paper towel if your acrylics if you're using a new generation acrylics it should stay con uh, water soluble here for a few hours and you can so if it starts to dry you can just poke into a tiny 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 little bit of water on the edge of your paper towel and that will really cut through it see how much i can cut through that so if it starts to dry you can still cut through it here and pick up and stuff. So this is a, this is actually a technique. I started doing this years ago when I uh, was over in the Netherlands and I had an opportunity uh, to watch a demonstration of some of Rembrandt's techniques. 
and it was fantastic. And he did this a lot, put in glazes and then actually physically drew his pattern coming back like this. So I want to set in some wild roses. I like, uh, I love this reaction right here of these two here. So I might pull this down just a bit more. And it's a great way to get an idea, lift off some of those other colors and start to see where your composition is. And you could, you know, and, and when you start doing this stuff, guys, especially those that use, <laughs> I'm sorry, I do know how to speak, but especially you that want to start creating some of your own looks, as you read some of these other things that you start to see, see, you could come in here and just tint half the rose with a light pink or a white and let the other part of that rose go towards the back one, what I call the ghosting, and you would have a beautiful composition like that as well. You know, there's just so many different ways that you could approach this particular painting. Let's uh, pop one right up over here we'll take a look at that turn it that way so when I want to turn something I imagine you know where the stems going to go here through here this is going to be my oval for my center and then I lengthen the petals that are on the side shorten the petals that are in the back and into the front and that causes the flower to turn so I can turn that that rose like that let's um take just a touch of water here and let's do let's put one back here that'll be a backwards turned one right back here i love to when i'm going to do a, a, a rose composition i love to have them turned in multiple directions because that creates more interest and a nice but you want to create a journey of flow and so if i put another one down here it would this would kind of pull the viewer's eye down that way there you'd see it coming down this way um but I also like to put them turned to the back, side views, maybe some little ghost ones or maybe a bud or two. Let's put maybe a, a couple of little rose buds right out over here and, you know, coming off like that. That'll be a different way uh, looking for it. So you can see this. Now I try to, it doesn't always happen, but I try to put it in a little smaller than what my initial, my ending one might be because I have a tendency, I'm a left brain painter, I have a tendency to grow my composition as I paint. So as you're sketching or if you're putting in an idea, think about doing it a little bit smaller. Okay, so I have that and you can see that. Now if you want to create some techniques, you can come in here and uh, you know, paint with some white to really lighten them up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint some light pink ones. Now, I'm going to use a number 10 filbert. You see me use a lot in my paintings and stuff, the flat brushes. And I started out many years ago, and for many, many years, I was a filbert painter. And the filbert allows you to do a little bit different, a little bit more detailed. They both work kind of the same, but the filbert gives you a slightly different look. And so I've been doing for the last couple of years a lot with the flats, which you have a lot of videos to show. And I want to do some more education with the filberts. And uh, filberts are ones that I use on portraits and stuff like that a lot as well. So I'm going to take my number 10. This is a number 10. Uh, filbert, fusion filbert, long handle. Now to make a warm pink, we use the naphthol red light. Got a little open medium there, meant to get white. But that makes you a real warm pink. To cool that down, you use the quinacridone. So this is warm, this is cool. And you'll see the difference between the two. It's, it's a beautiful warm and cool. If you're going to start out, you can start out right in between the two and make a neutral temperature that's right between the two. You can see this is more yellow, more, and this is very, very cool. And so making a neutral temperature here works really well. I'm going to add a little water, and I'm going to make this a little lighter, just a nice neutral, so a little bit of both. And let's come in, and let's pull in, and we'll leave some of this light. We want to... What we want to do is, is we want to vary our brushwork. It's very easy, especially for if you're like me coming from decorative painting, it's very easy to, you know, make the same mark each time. So I want to vary that. So I want to kind of undulate, make different sizes and stuff here of these petals going to the back. And we want these petals maybe a little bit more of an oval shape sometimes, 
maybe a little pointed out here onto this one and a little oval. So the actual edges of this, of the petals here, and we need five petals on this little rose, but the actual uh, petals are all shaped a little bit different. So sometimes I'll pull out to shape that petal a little different here onto the rose. And uh, this actual variety that we see over here is called the dog rose. It's a, a wild rose, but it's called the dog rose. And it um, kind of goes with my dog portraits that I've been painting. Now, let's, let's make this one a little different. Let's just cool it off a little bit. The, mo the, the most interest you're going to get, let's cool it maybe right here just a bit more, a little slightly different color. You're going to get a lot of interest in your painting by making your wild roses slightly different. We'll, we'll harmonize it a little bit more, but we'll make them slightly different. Look over to your reference to get some ideas of petals, but you don't need to copy. Let's get this a little darker, a little heavier, right in here, so it's a little different color right here. That's what we're gonna look for. And that's a real pretty color. Isn't that a real pretty color against that? It just kind of sings. So let's let's go harmonize. Harmonize means I'm going to carry that color over maybe a little bit more of the red, but I'm going to carry that deeper color over to some of the other parts, maybe this one right in here. We'll carry some of that. Just tap your brush. And see, when I use my brush, and this is the most important thing, I'll use it flat. I'll slide the point, and this is why I like the filbert. I'll slide the chisel to do a little bit of drawing to get some difference and stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, into my marks. That's what I like to have. And, you know, if you want this petal, okay, let me just show you this, okay? If you want, like, this petal here, right here, it's hard to see, but it's it scoops out. So my brush movement would be scooping out like this. If I want it to bend down, go up and bend down, starting to bend right here, my brush movement would be like this and then down. And you can see that a brush movement, a mark like this and then a mark like this will start to give the impression of that pedal building down. And so a mark, if I put on a mark that's like this, right up like this, my pedal grows out and scoops up. See the difference? So your, the movement that you give to your brush and that pedal, don't just put on the color, the movement of your brush by leaving those slight little brush marks are what going, is what is going to dictate how that pedal is going to move. Now, how do you know all this? That dog, because that's how we, we watch that and how we paint the fur. So if you have problems, making, and I'm very serious on this, guys, and I want all of you to succeed and be the best artist that you can be. Uh, if you really want to practice that and seeing that motion, how it goes, you paint the fur on an animal. The fur on an animal is easy to see, and it's easy to practice your brush movements and how much pressure, what kind of brush you are, to to create that fur and that movement. And then you just translate that over here, those types of movements to your roses. So let's just take a little heavier here. So if I bend down like this, I'm bending the pedal down. If I go like this, I'm gonna lift, lift the pedal up. You can see a lifting motion to it. And so, and I'm gonna want this one to kind of, let's make this one curve in. So how would you do that? Okay, you're gonna have a, a mark that slightly curves in like this and leave some of that mark. And you'll see that that pedal here, so that one lifts up and in, that one slightly gives the impression of going out here. If I want it to bend out again, I could bend it this way and then bend it down this way and then that pedal would droop and fold down. I don't think I really want that on that one, but you can see that. So. How you bend and twist and fold these uh, petals is all up to you. Let's take some of this, a little bit of water. Let's just push in a little bit of this. Leave some undulations, some different types of, of uh, petals there. Let's warm it a little bit as it's coming forward. Here, a little longer on the sides. Let that just be here. And then let's just put a smaller more red 
mark right up for right now, right up front here. We'll probably turn this more light, but we'll put a little bit of that color in there right now. And that's a beautiful color, and it's heavy on the naphthol red and a little bit of the quinacridone, and that's a beautiful color that we can express into some other areas of these guys as well to show that color. And see, it's you start to work those colors through there and that's where you start to get more interest in your composition and you'll see some of those colors as they work in there now let's go do just a little bit of the the uh, rosebuds out here but since I as I move out I'm gonna want this to tone down a little bit my background is pretty dry here now and so but I can go over and grab a little bit of this background and add this right to my my reds here and if it goes too dark you can add just a touch of the lights now see how much grayer softer grayer we don't want it quite that gray but it's grayer and so it'll be softer in my composition here as i go paint in maybe a couple of uh, rose buds here we'll put a couple in right in here coming up this way here and i'll leave this very much very much lost edges, the contemporary look there. Okay, now let's take some of that color, maybe a little water in it here, and let's push that right up here. And as we're going to do this backwards turned one here, right like that. So that gives me kind of a neat composition. I could have this other one right down here. Let's do it a little bit grayed as well, right down here. Maybe we'll kind of turn one right like this so we're looking at the the side of it here and so you see this is great you'll see this brighter color now see what happens is and let me just intensify that color especially that a little bit of both of these these tones as I intensify that color right in here which is what I want to do. Your real your eye is really going to come in here and you can see it really softening here. And that follows our rules of color theory. Those of you studying color theory, okay? I have a wonderful class on it if you want. Big, big, big class over on our on the links are down in the video description, but on color theory, I've been teaching color theory for 40 years and color theory is necessary, but color theory is what it is is I can set up a focal point of my colors I'm going to drive the viewers right in here and then I'm going to soften those colors and one way is as an uh, there's a rule and uh, the, the rule is the law of disproportionate color and and as it, the rule is as an uh, as a color leaves the center of interest and heads to the background it becomes more like the background and that's why you get the in atmospherics and landscapes you see the mountains back there they start to look like the sky that's because of the atmospherics and so we do the same thing so whatever my background is here I have to take my colors more like the background so I start out very bright and then I take my colors towards my background law of disproportionate color and that happens if I go push this bright color right over here let me just do it and screw it up here a minute but if I go push this bright color right here I flatten the composition out see so maybe I want just a little touch of it there, just so you pick up a little bit of it, but it's not as intense as what's going on here. Does that make sense? Color theory. Color theory, if you find that your paintings are looking too flat and stuff like that and you want to get more interest, you need to study color theory. It'll help you, give you those ideas. Now, let's come in here and let's just add, take a look my favorite colors for stems, burnt sienna, a little bit of pine green. I'm gonna use just the chisel of this brush. We'll use some angular motions here to this, and I'm gonna blur this out and soften it a little bit. And shorter marks, we wanna do this very contemporary, so we're gonna want shorter little marks here, and just kinda of push in some stems in here that is going to kind of connect our composition, our, our units of our composition here. So let's just kind of maybe fold this one out here and let's uh, just add a few, maybe we'll add a few more in here. But see, I'll use my uh, the, the chisel in different ways here to kind of set up the idea of these stems and stuff coming through here. I love to do that. And let's just set up a smaller one coming up here and stuff. Maybe uh, 
let's lengthen this. We want this composition a little longer because our board's going this way. But maybe we'll have a few marks out here. And this is where I really just like to blur them out and do something like that just to put some marks. So you see, the marks are what makes your eye travel. Now, let's go back and I'm going to clean that color out of my brush. What I want to do is take some white, some yellow oxide, a touch of green. This is going to be the light greener kind of center, yellow green center. I, I want this kind of a soft yellow green so I'm not using the brighter yellow. I'll use the, the more soft uh, yellow oxide here. We'll push in and just lift up right from the center working out into the petals here, what will be the center here of these little wild roses here. And vary the tone a little bit, maybe a little bit. You can even add a little bit of that Darlie light so it changes a bit. And see, so you get, and, that, and I know it's hard to see, but you get just a little bit of a change. And that right there, guys, is the sign of a master artist that's willing to make those little changes those little hue and tone changes here, uh, you know, into their painting as they're, as they're working something. So, and rather than just putting on the same color, like I might come here and just say, okay, I'm going to hit this a little more dark, you like, boo. And that did not work. <laughs> so I'm going to wipe my brush. I got too much green in it. Darty Light is a semi-transparent, slightly weaker tone, so it can be overpowered really easy. That's better. That makes it look a little bit more like I know what I'm doing. And <clears throat> we'll come back here. We'll work just a bit of this softer. Maybe let those edges soften out a bit here. Okay. Back here, backwards turns one. We don't really need that. This uh, we're not going to have the on the open bud, so that's pretty good. Now I'm going to come back and set my light source in this too. So I'm going to pick up some more light. Let's set a nice light source coming. It's coming in this way. So the flat of this one right here will be lighter. And maybe pick up some yellow and make another little mark out this way. Tap them. And this is the pure ala prima of it, that, that I'm not trying to blend anything. I'm working multiple and different tone strokes as I'm putting on these colors. That's what's going to make it pretty. So, and sometimes I like that green with just a touch of that burnt sienna in it. I like it, and sometimes I'll put a little, you see that beautiful color there with just a touch of that Darty light? And I use just the tip here of the, the filbert to just add a bit of that tone working into those areas. And that's what makes you, so you can see that's, that center starts to become very pretty. Now into this one over here, we're seeing a lot of this. So you could take these kind of color, these tones, these are older, these are almost spent. Their, their centers, they're dying out. Down on the other ones, which you can't see, it's off camera here. But let me tell you, it's fantastic. <laughs> but off camera there, you'll find tons of these flowers everywhere. Um, but the, you can see there get a little bit more yellow in there. So as it gets older, it gets a little more spent. You might have some more of these blues and umbers and stuff like that. But we'll put a little bit of that color in there. Let's go touch into a little bit more of that yellow right up in here. Get some of these pretty little colors working in here. And especially into the center because this is the part of the flower that really grabs you. Then I'll come back down here. I'm going to lighten this side up a bit because that's the side if it's hitting the light and hitting the light and coming down. But let's touch a little bit of some of this down over here. Here and I'll use my finger and just drag it down. See this is very dry. Now if you want to blend this start using some of that open medium. You can just tap in that open medium and your colors will stay wet and you can work wet into wet. I like to work tone. I paint with a lot of tone so I don't mind it being not blended. It doesn't bother me. You know, it used to. I used to think everything has to be blended. Not anymore. I like to work the tones. So I'm going to work a little more tone in there. A little more. See, I like that green. A little bit of that burnt sienna coming out there. And you can see that center interest start to happen. Maybe touch a little more burnt sienna right around. 
and that burnt sienna is so pretty. But you could add a little bit of the like raw umber to that and pull in some of that background, which would be very nice. And you can start working that right around the center here. Just a little touch. See, I use the big brush and I use the little corners of the brush. So I don't get them. You know, if you use a small brush and it's a lot easier, let me tell you, especially for beginners, go to a smaller brush. But as you get as you get more accomplished with your brush skills, it's better to stay as large a brush as you can using different corners and edges and pushes because that's going to give you more interest and your marks that you're creating are never going to be the same from one flower to the other which is the secret of painting a beautiful composition you want your marks to always change and so no two centers will ever become the same because and most of that comes from you can't use that brush always the same it's too big but a small brush you can go in there did 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 tap that in there and all your centers will become the same or or very similar to each other and that is not always a good thing not always a good thing so i like all of that difference that's there okay now let's get some of that dark out for right now and let's go work on to our petals here. I'm going to take some of my cool and some more warm. I'm going to work up onto this one right here. I want more contrast back here. So I'm going to push more of an edge, just no more than halfway down this particular petal. I'm going to push the outside edge of the petal in. Let's come over here. Let's push maybe more of a, like a, you know, larger shape here, undulate that outside, just little touches right there. And so you start to see more of the outside shape of the petal, but I make it with this big brush and all kinds of smaller marks. Now, I might switch and push a little bit of that in here and we'll, cause we'll lighten up the front of that. So I'll push a little bit and use different parts of your brush. That is the key. Let's come down here, let's, See this one, so I gotta say, do I'm gonna in one, two, three, four, five. So this petal's gonna sit up on this one. We'll cover up part of this center right here with this petal. We'll let the dark of that petal overreach the light of the one underneath it there. That'll be kind of kind of neat, make it look like we know what we're doing. Watch your angles. Don't don't paint any more than half of the the petal though. Just the little tips out there. And you'll see that the little tips out there on these flowers can get a lot of color, you know, in them. And they get lighter as they start to come in towards that center. Now, this is working up into here. As I get down in through here, as I'm starting to fall away from where I want my center, I should look to grain that just a bit. So we can darken it and gray it. You know, we, we can gray it, excuse me, and then uh, we can even use a little... This, but we want to add a little bit of our blues and umbers here and then we'll lighten back up so it's grayed a little bit more so as I come down over here we'll look at the color and I can go a little bit darker but a little bit different color but it's going to be a little grayer so it's not going to have you're going to have some interest out there we can go a little bit more but I don't I want to keep the tone slightly slightly lighter than what I have in here and more a little bit more gray coming closer to the background so your eye stays up here so this is kind of a I might on this one here and this is all trial and error for you, you get ideas and then you see if it works but I might increase the intensity of this one right here but then on the rest of them here start to gray them out a bit so the flower doesn't have quite as, as you can see here on this flower, it has more punch on this side than it does on that side. That's the ultimate, the ultimate goal here. Let's push in a little bit of this out into this, what are going to be these buds. I'm just going to add a little water. See, I love to use the brush in different angles here. So we'll push that one and maybe this one right here. We might just whisper a little bit of that right down through here. This is the, you know, the, the really the brush marks of the olive prima that I really like. Just blur that out a bit. Just create some of that color 
And that's what I like. That's what I'm getting braver at as I'm getting, a, you know, a more experience in painting like this. I'm going to get a little braver. I'm just putting some of those colors back through there to help fill up my composition on something here. Let's go a little grayer. Some We'll gray it down with a little raw umber and red violet, and then we'll just lighten it just a touch here. That's a bit too much, a little grayer. I want it, a, I want it just red violet, but a lot of gray. See how that's a darker color, but it sits in grayer, do you see? It's containing more of this color, so it becomes more like that color. And that's what I want to do there, okay? Now, let's go back and let's work Let's touch into a, a little bit of our lighter yellows and whites, lighter color here, and we'll touch into pushing in some light here, right in there like that. Mostly though, I took out a little too much, so I get an opportunity to put it back, but we want mostly right down in here. A little more color, a little different here. Let's push some of that dark light, maybe a bit of green and burnt sienna. Let's just hit that top up here again so it's a little different, see? But now I've got a little bit more of a light side. Does that make sense? That's what I'm going for. So we'll come back up over here. We'll hit a bit more of a light side here, right in there like that, and direct that light. We can really intensify that light, right? say right up into this area right in here, because this that light hitting next to that dark right there, you can see, really puts in a center of interest of our roses right there, see? Works really, really well. Now, let's soften that. How do you go soften that? Let's take our warm and our cool and a little bit of light right up on the tip of the brush. Don't mix it too well. Let's even add a little bit of the open medium this time. So, and maybe even a little extender. And I do this, I add the extender because I love the slipperiness of it. And the open medium here is going to really keep it open for a long time. But let's just brush over those edges just a bit. And that will, see how that, that just takes off some of the sharpness of them. I don't want to do it so much that I blend them. I just want to override the red over the green just to soften the color exchange. Now you don't have to, but if you look at like these guys right here, there's a softer exchange. And so that's how you do it right there. You just lightly just drag over it with some of that color and soften that exchange. I don't want to do it too much because then I'll lose my color interest there, but just a little bit here to hit that, and then that's up to you. How much do you do, that's up to you. I do like this slightly cooler light that's on this one. Mine's very warm, so I could leave this one warmer and cool that one, and to do that, what I would do is I'd pick up that warm and then add a little bit of my cooler background gray to that. And now you'll see this will be slightly cooler and grayer right down here won't have that intensity of the lighter yellow. See how, see the slightly different color here? And these are all things that uh, you, can, you can work on. Now I can take just a touch of that color and add it just a bit over here and create a beautiful harmony of colors going especially around that one. You could pick up some of those colors that you're gonna see right back up over here and that works very, very well there. Let's come in and let's take a little bit of our yellow, a little bit of our yellow oxide, a little bit of our Hansa, a bit of white. This is a big brush to do this. I'll do it with this brush. And sometimes I'll use my thing here to stabilize my hand. And I'm just gonna use the tip of this brush and touch in a little bit there into the center. Now that's a little too perfect, so I'll just take it off just a bit. Don't want it to be quite that perfect, but you can use just the tip here to put that lighter little bit of center in there. And it's not showing up too much on the low side, and I can put a little shadow in there. Now let's darken that down, Dave, just a bit. Touch just a bit of that right in there onto this one. Could have just a 
a little bit more. But all kinds of centers to the wild roses and how you paint them, you know, whether or not they're spent or not, or, you know, older ones or whatever, that's up to you. I'm going to just take some of this color and just work a bit of that right around that center. Not take out all that beautiful gray, but just add that other little tone in there. So now you start to see a lot of tones coming in, you know, to that, uh, to that wild rose there. Now we can come in. Let's take some warmer. Usually when a color goes lighter, it goes warmer. Not always, but we, we do. And I can take some warmer, lighter, and just blush right up over the edge here, the turning edge here of the petals, or where my light color is. So I can restate some of those colors there on those wild roses on that, on that particular part of it. And I can work this back and forth. You can put this, you can keep it wet, and work your colors, you know, work one right into the next and blend out. But see, I like little streaks of color. I like that kind of stuff to happen in these. And so I don't like to, um, I don't like to, you know, keep them wet. I like, I, I really do like to paint these acrylic. I'm gonna lighten this up and pull some lighter color here. And I think I'll, this will help push that just a bit lighter there like that there and you know if you want to soften out you know say you really like this one right over here you want to soften that exchange a little bit more take just a bit of that light right there soften the exchange do you want that real light this one has a light little edge right out here how do you do that you take your filbert let's even put in a little extender here so what that does is going to bring all the hairs of my brush back together again because this is an old one and then I'll slide it like this back and forth just a couple of times and I'll pick up a little bead of that light and I'll lean the brush over on that little bead and that will draw that edge for me right there and I'll tap it that draws that nice cl uh, clear crisp edge I want a little more light so I'll just pick up a bit right out here let's expand it out just a bit push it out a bit and see you can get some undulation of the edges and then walk back up over here to your reds and your quinacridones and just run a little bit of that right in there like that to soften that exchange of that rose right there and so you know and how much you do that's up to you now I'm gonna want a little bit of that light traveling out here like that right in there. So I want some of that shadow, but I want some of that light traveling out there like that. That's what I want on that one. And I want some of this light to medium value light to come out here because that's that dark edge of that one. So we'll push a little bit here and I'll just soften that just a touch there. Maybe I want to use the edge technique here again. Now this is the this is what I call the petal edging technique. Now you can do it with you can do it. It'll look different. You can do it with the open medium or you can do it with just extender. The open medium works really well too because especially if I want to draw up in the front cuz it keeps the color thicker and you can see it picks up now a little bit larger bead. But if you want to see me do it a lot and how I do it to shape flowers, just go right up to the top of my channel here. Click search, search this channel, put in petal edging. And, and it, the, the search engine will find the videos that I have on the website for petal edging. And I'll show you all different kinds of ways to draw petal edges that, with, that, with those videos there. Let's push just a bit of that in. Maybe uh, just a trans, I call these a transitional tone right in through here. I'm going to pull across slightly because that's going to make the petal look like it's sitting at an angle here before it drops down. So pull down. Now let's edge that petal one more little bit. This time a little bit thicker white and open medium here. And we'll push that right in. So if I if I get it where it looks like it's too outlined, so I'll do it here. I'll start to outline. It's a little too outlined. Then I flatten the brush and pull in slightly, and that will uh, that will uh, help the uh, the the really the uh, outlined look of it. Take take it off just a bit here, but you can see 
And what we want to do is just model this. You can see, and like this, you can have variations of light and stuff pulling in. So we will just pick up some of these colors, use this brush very light, set it down and just pull in a little bit and leave some of those slight little undulations there of those petals. It's all up to you and it's all just really nice brushwork of bringing this together here, how you're gonna bring it together. Let's, um, so I can use the petal edging technique with the dark as well right here to put this edge of this petal right back up on top of those, that other one I just put in there. So I can make this these petals, you know, twist and turn and change. I can edge it with the light. I can edge it with the dark. Let's put this edge right up on top of that one there. So we'll pull that in right into the center a little bit and just take that off maybe too far in just a bit, just like that. So you can and you can build them different ways. If I want to, you know, let's just take a little bit of our dark and let's just put a little bit of a swoop of that color right in here. Put that exchange a little bit sh uh, harsher there and I'll get a little different look to that uh, center. All different kinds of ways. Let's take a bit of this and just tap up through some of that center. I hit that very center there just to, this will just model up that center a bit. And maybe a, just a touch more there. So you can see as you're building it there, you get all different kinds of uh, edges and, and different ways there. And you know, how much, there's sometimes that, uh, when I'm painting the wild roses, you'll see, and you'll see it in here, where some of that red might come in a little farther so it's not a perfect light oval out there. Or you go back and forth. This is some of the final stuff that you do. You go back and forth, changing those colors just a bit. And in doing that, I, of course, lost some of my real light that I want to have. So I'm going to go push that right back in. But this back and forth like this is what gives you your pretty roses, that, these wild roses that are going to have so many different little undulations of color here and that's and the more you paint it the prettier they get here so let's come in here let's pick up a little open medium a little bit of this yellow and the light and a light pink and let's bring this light little edge in here for this little rose petal is sitting up on top of that one but we'll bring a little bit of light right here which will bring it to the front and I'll, I'm going to make it a little heavier right there, right there, right in there like that. Maybe just a touch or two along in here just to model that up. So you'll see some light there. And you can see on this one, you can make a turn in it. You can put a little light. That's all up to you, you know, how much you want to, you know, detail. So I can just pick up a tiny little bit if I wanted to draw this one right up on top or in front of that one just like that and just leave that, see that edge. And I could, if I think it's too much, I could take a little red and paint into it. Those are decisions you're gonna make. And you know, how you make those decisions is what's gonna give you your look to your particular flowers. And you know, so, and I am one that is constantly playing with all kinds of looks and uh, changing my flowers and stuff up. So this one I really like. I might put in just a just a touch of lighter right around that edge there. I don't think I'll do maybe a little bit of a lighter warm pink edge out here. Just a little bit of one right out here just to say I did it. Maybe a bit of that pink pulling out right there coming out that side. Doesn't really need too much. I kind of like the the way that it's looking. Um, maybe um, just a bit of it, of this petal pulling out. See if I curve it out, it makes these petals look like it's they're pulling down. See, so that's all coming down, and then I can restate some of that. 
that uh, the two reds, slightly different color, but it's two reds right there to uh, bring that one up like that. So there's all different kinds of ways. Let's, um, let me show you a turned edge up here. We'll take some of this. We want to gray this down a bit. A little like gray that down. So a little bit of our background, some of our reds, a little light here. And I'm going to model up a lot of color here. And I'll use this right up here, right up like that. Just put a bit of that. Let's go a touch darker, but maybe a bit of that umber in there so it's not bright. So the umber will drop its intensity here. So you can see it's darker, but it's not bright. It's not a bright red like what's in there. See, and I'll probably want to intensify that one just a bit more. But so I'll do that. Then I'll take some of my light and just so if I want to make an edge of a petal that folds over, then I just do the edge that way. And maybe uh, and this is a lot easier with a smaller brush, but I love to paint with a big brush because I get more casual edges. But that's all up to you. Maybe pull this one down, give it a little streaks down here. Let's just take a, and so I'll, I'll just sometimes twist and turn a little edge and it'll make it look like it's, that petal is rolling over just a bit there. Gives it a little different look here. A little turn right there. We can go in and paint in the calyx and stuff. Uh, maybe I'm going to take some of this softer reddish gray here and curve up like this from that, and that's going to build that petal going up and around. Now, I can also, and these are all your decisions, but I'll also maybe take just the tiniest little soft light gray and just bend that around if I want to make that shape more of a, a petal edge right like that so you can see more of the the petal but uh, I am one that also likes to leave it uh, so that it's not a, a perfect shape so that your eye is going to uh, you know is going to basically draw it a bit I'm going to take a little open medium a little bit of our lighter lighter gray colors that are right here very simplistically work on some just some ideas of petals here not going to paint perfect little rosebuds you don't need it you're going to see these as little rosebuds they're going to look like little rosebuds when i get done here hopefully no they will they uh, let's gray this a bit a little bit of our umber and you can see i don't use very much paint but let's just soften that exchange a bit there and, you know, when you paint, you know, it only really takes, and this is what that took me the longest, I think, uh, habits to break. We're going to turn these into rosebuds. They're going to look like rosebuds. They'll look like rosebuds as soon as I give them calyxes and little flowers. But all of these will start to look like roses because your eye will start to see here, and then everything else that is that color is going to appear to you as a rose. And if you look at the masters, what they say about the impressionism of it is, and when you get out into here in these outside areas, don't be precise. Let it be just blurry so that the viewer's eye can paint the flower. Don't paint the flower form. It doesn't need to be painted for them again. You just put in some color, like I'll put in just a little bit of a light shape right here, and your eye will start to paint the flower and see and you may be seeing the flower a little different than what I am, but that's okay. You know, I don't have to paint it perfect for you to see what, the, I mean, that that is a flower. And that, that was the hardest for me as an artist to let go and just, you know, not do everything absolutely perfect. Just to let some of this stuff go. It's hard. At least for me it was. So I'm just putting in some grayer, softer, a little bit of dark, a little bit of those colors pulling out. Don't need too much going on there. Maybe a bit of the light to say petal here. Doesn't need very much to say petal right in there like that. And um, let's just 
smash that around there. Give some movement. Movement more than anything else is what is going to make your flowers pretty. The color movement that you have. Now, let's take some of that green. Let's take some of that, that sienna here. And let's come in here. We'll widen out slightly for the calyx. And then maybe a, a petal or two here or, or for the septals, just a little more color for the rose septals. Now, we can also, also make that slightly more of a yellow-green maybe and put in a little bit of lighter color, a little lighter touch in there, just a mark or two in there like that. That works. Let's take some of this green and burnt sienna, maybe a little darulite. I like that color into these as well. Here, we'll pull down some ideas of leaves and filler color right down in here. Don't have to be perfect, just start putting in some color here. And um, let's take some of this color maybe right out here. It's a little dark, so what I'm gonna do is put it on. Go ahead and put it on, and then I'm gonna take my finger and wipe it back while it's still a little wet. If you're afraid of that, put some open medium in it or a little bit of extender, and that color will slide better for you. And let's put a little longer one here, a little different shapes here some of the wild rose leaf shapes. Wipe your finger and just pull through. I hit that dark up there, but that's okay. I'm gonna leave it. I used to worry about it. That was from dirty finger. <laughs> so wipe your finger. I used to worry about it, but now I don't. That's okay. It'll look, people won't notice it. I used to go, oh no, you know. No, they won't notice it. So we'll put a little light movement of some of those colors right there okay that looks kind of neat let's put a another little touch of the dark right in here and some of that moving off and so what i'm doing and this is why i do like the filbert the filbert i know how to i always call this driving your brush and i know how to drive the filbert because i painted for 20 years with this brush and I know how to drive it, and I know how to lift up the pressure and get little marks when I want them. So I like the filbert. Um, but you see me paint with a lot of flats, and in the la especially in the last several years on my video channel here, painting with the flats, and that's because I wanted to try to give myself more variation of my marks, the marks that I make. And so if I always painted with the filbert, which I think is the most versatile of all the brushes, if I always paint with it, my marks would never vary. So I did it. I moved over to the flat just to change my marks more, more than anything else. And they have. But now I can go, and now I know how to drive the flat and the filbert to do whatever it is that I want to do. And let's put in a calyx here. Right onto that one there. Okay. Let's come in. Let's add little bits of calyx here to these roses here. Add a little bit of the marks right there. We can go with a lighter, we even have some of our Hansa here. This is a lighter yellow green, maybe a little too bright for me right now. So we'll add some yellow oxide to that. And you can just come through and lighten some of this as well. And that's up to you, you know, how light you make this. Here, let's go a little more green and light, almost like an edge, and just draw some of that petal in there. And I'll take this, I'll put a little bit of light, and I'll just draw a little stem line down that uh, rose there. Maybe uh, another little touch of some light there, just to, uh, you know, indicate. And... This is, uh, you know, it may seem hard, you know, when you, especially those who are beginners, to use the large brush like this. But you can see the variation of marks that I get from this larger brush. And I really do like it. Let's make some a little bit more yellow. And yellow with a bit of the um, 
quinacridone in there is a real pretty color too in this composition. You see that? Because it picks up, and we can just add a little mark or two of that, because it picks up some of the quinacridone from the from the roses and, and adds it. Let's put a little light here, just a soft little touch of that right there, because it picks up some of the the uh, quinacridone from the roses and takes it into the leaves, giving you a better harmony here. And so I'll come back maybe and touch a, here I'll take a bit of that quinacridone, bit of that green, and just touch a little, again, varying the tones back in through there, it's gonna give you some prettier effects here. So just drop a little bit of those colors in there. And see, I like to paint with it out here like this. And let's get a bit of that yellow out here so I can see some different tones. And I'll touch those different tones and just touch them into the leaves here as I'm making what I call transitions, visual transitions of color here as I'm working that down. And uh, just makes it fun, makes it pretty different little things. We can put a lighter little touch into some of these uh, little uh, rosebuds here. I think I'm going to uh, be a little wild and dangerous here. We'll gray that down a bit, but uh, put a bit more color right out here and uh, take most of it off, but drive that color a little bit more. And then Maybe I want some of that and some green here. Let's add some extender so we have some that we can just work some of these colors right out here. Pull across a bit, pull, you know, take them off. Just work some of those colors there into that area. And uh, let's push a bit more of this. Right out here, so you see it's a, it's a, a fun little contemporary, uh, you know, little shape. Now, let's uh, take some of this and uh, we'll come right up here, push a little leaf shape right there. I always like the, the three leaves, the trinity of leaves that come out. And so I push it down and then I rotate my brush over onto its chisel there. And that's gonna make a little trinity of leaves and I'll just take that off a bit. It's a little point. Gives it a different interest point that I don't wanna take away from my roses. Now, I'm gonna go quinacridone and red violet. This is a deep, dark, rich, cool color that is really gonna now pop the centers of where I wanna have some contrast here. And use this sparingly We'll push some of that right up over this one. And I can soften that color exchange just by adding a little red here. And, but it's a nice deep, see that deep, deep, cool color and stuff there that is, and you know, it's adding more contrast. Do you want to add more contrast? That's up to you. But it is a beautiful color that I usually add towards the end because it's going to give a lot of contrast to the, to the flower. And how much you use it is up to you. But let's just add a bit more here and there. Edges, and stuff, especially into this center of interest rose here. And so you see it's a building. And you know, I work multiple tones. I mean, I got a real quick light to dark. Now that does, in a lot of cases, that doesn't bother me. If it does bother you, just make a tone right in between the two and just touch right along the edge. Don't blend it back and forth. You'll destroy your tones. Just touch it and the eye will smooth it out, okay? Because the eye is seeing that changing of the tones. Let's um, take a bit of that real dark, maybe a bit of that reds in there too and add a touch of that right in here, really where we want that, that uh, to lift that center flower. And so a little bit of color there helps lift that. We could 
fill in right in there with any kind of real dark like you see like right over here and that would lift the composition as well but there's other times in other paintings where you see me where I'll put light and down and through and you can you can do that that's a judgment call they both of them are correct you know and so I always say paint them both see what it looks like paint them both see what you like see what your customers see what your friends like you know and um that's all up to you. You know how much you're going to do with that. We'll just put just whispers of that color, that tone out there. I want to have just, a, and I'll finish this off. I, I really like the way it's it's come. I'll finish this off with pulling some more light, and then we need to do something that is really, really important. Really, really <laughs> important. But I want to push that little bit of light back in here some of the yellows and that light touch of green maybe here dark light green light I want to push a little more light right up in here so that they have de and right up in here so you definitely have a nice pull of the light coming down that side we could not quite as light a little darker have just a bit of it like right out over here so you can see it a bit more. That's up to you. Could be a touch lighter right in the front there. There we go. Just like that. Now, the really, really important thing, we're going to take the blue, the, the uh, raw umber, and some white. This is going to be a light what we want to do is make kind of this color right here, which you can see we want this color right here. So I'm pretty darn close to that. We'll thin this out just a bit, okay? And we want to touch this through the composition. Now see the difference, see what it does? It pulls that color down in here into the composition. And what this does, and it's very important, and I say this in color theory all the time, what it's gonna do is harmonize the background to what my painting is. And so I will even touch some of this color here and there into my roses and stuff like that so that you pick that up. And so you're, and what it does, instead of having like pink roses and, you know, green leaves and then bluish background, you now have this color appearing in several areas of your painting. And so it's, and since it's doing that, it's harmonizing. And that's what I do is I harmonize. Just touch some of these colors around. And so the viewer picks up some of the background, especially like right up in through here a little bit. But maybe we can make a little bit of a mark right up there. Just an edge of a mark. Doesn't take much, just a little mark of that color. But that's what makes it so pretty. And so, especially when I'm painting a lot of roses or and, and stuff, you see me in the 30 Days of Roses do this as well. I'll take that, I'll harmonize the painting at the end by taking the background into some of my objects. And, you know, you can vary, you know, that's up to you how much that you do. You know, it's up to you. And you can vary the amounts or make a tone right in between there. And so sometimes I'll put in too much and go, well, that's a little too much. So then I'll take some of my leaf color and I'll just start to back it out a little bit until I see the, the coloring that I like in there. So, yeah, it's really, uh, it's really a fun thing to do. But harmonize, and that's always one of my thought processes, is harmonizing my background to, and my objects, putting those in you know, together and stuff. So you can smooth out some of this if you want. Um, you know, that that's a judgment call. I think I will put just a little more dark right there, and then I'm going to call this painting. We did it in just a little over an hour. Well, I spoke to you quite a bit for so maybe real close to an hour. Spoke to you a lot right at the very beginning. But I wanted to show you that this open medium stays wet forever and ever, okay? Weeks. So, as you you know, it doesn't work with all acrylics. It, you know, you have to be careful, and you know, you it's 
you know, I always tell everybody, and as a paint chemist, I always told everybody, never mix different brands of acrylics because they're sitting at different types of binders. These types of acrylics are very different than acrylics that were created 25 or 30 years ago that I even created 25 to 30 years ago. So you always check, but we have ways to really slow things down, and, you know, that's up to you. So you have this. Now, you can also take some of your, you know, pinky colors and put them down through here and all that kind of stuff. It's all up to you. You can smooth it out a little bit. You can, you know, a nice thing to do, you know, if you want, if you want a little bit more harmony, you think of bringing your colors together. Now, I painted that entire painting with that one number 10 filbert, okay? But you can take a warmer, take some of these colors here, some warmer, and I don't think I'll do this on this, so I'll put this off on it and then maybe take some of it off. We'll see. But you can take some of your yellow, your warmer of your center. See the warmer color of your centers. There it is there. You can even soften it with a little bit of this. But you can add a little bit of that warmth, right? Well, maybe I'll leave that. Add a little bit of that warmth. See it right up to there. And so, and again, what is that doing? That's just tying your composition together. It's tying the warmth of the centers coming down into your flowers here. So... You know, you're you're picking up some of the colors of that center, and your of those roses, and you're putting it out here into your background slightly. So you're picking up that color and putting it right back out there. So you pick it all up. So you can soften through. You could put some of that color down through here. You've seen me put lighter blues down through the the whole thing. You know, I'll, I'll sometimes come in there and take. Let's just do that. A lighter, lighter blue here. I'll thin it out a little lighter sapphire blue, maybe a bit of this warmer color in here. We'll thin this out so you can work it kind of kind of softly here and just work some of that color, you know, into the background here like this and again, it just starts to model up the color. Start working some of this a little bit, putting in some of the other colors here that you see. And see, that's really pretty here too. These are all techniques I show you in a large variety of paintings. And sometimes some of these techniques I use on these backgrounds, you see them on my portraits and stuff that I do. I do that as well. That's pretty. Sometimes I'll pull that color right on through and let it show up down at the bottom here like it's a through light type of thing. Sometimes I'll come in and, and actually show that color really light, like right into the center, right in there like a little spot so like you see it through. So there's just all kinds of ways you can do it and have some fun. This is where you learn the most and try some things out here afterwards to uh, bring in some more interest to your paintings. But, you know, experiment and play and have fun. And that's what it's all about. All different kinds of ways, okay? So there's a... A really uh, a, a casual way to do that. I hope you enjoy that. I'm going to uh, flip over and paint this one. <laughs> paint the dog one with you. And so those of you in the membership, those of you in the membership, I'll put the final photo and I'll put the reference photo and stuff over there for you so you can get yourself some ideas and try some different things. And then we'll do some more animal portraits and more landscapes. And I have a Western and I have a request for uh, small faces for Westerns. And so I'm going to push, I'm going to paint that one as well. But uh, we have quite a few more animal portraits uh, to do. So you'll see those coming up in the next day. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy it. Give it a try. Paint with this. Try some of the open medium and watch how long those colors stay open. Okay. And again, if you have any kinds of questions, just drop me a comment down below. I try to answer all of them. Don't forget to smash that like button and click share on and and if you're going to subscribe to the channel click that little bell so you get notified if you haven't clicked that little bell you need to go do that because then you get notified whenever we publish a video okay if you don't if you don't click that bell you don't get notified all right all right see you guys on the next one